Hello and welcome back to Max Runout. Uh, this is part four of our series on uh, injection molding uh, uh, recycled plastic. And uh, the last two parts uh, concern building the uh, injector. Uh, today we're going to switch gears and uh, uh, look at the uh, building of the shredder. Um, and uh, in a future video we'll do some testing on the shredder. Um, uh, but today we're going to just cover the details, how it was designed and, uh, and how it was built. So here we go. This video uh, will cover the build of the shredder. Um, as I said uh, earlier, a certain number of people were scared off by the complexity of the uh, shredders uh, in uh, Dave's, Dave Heckham's videos. They were certainly a superb uh, piece of equipment, but they were complicated and uh, and somewhat expensive to build. So I was trying to think of uh, a way of uh, doing it that uh, would be simpler and maybe more direct, uh, even though it might involve more uh, interaction with the thing. Uh, there, that shredder is completely automatic. You put plastic in the top, and and chips come out the bottom. Uh, so. I was looking at a, at a way to do it, and this uh, piece of equipment here uh, was the genesis of the whole thing. This is actually uh, uh, about, I don't know, eight or ten years ago, I bought a, uh, uh, a DR uh, trimmer. Uh, it's a, a unit, it's a line string trimmer, but it uh, has wheels on the back, and you can push it up. Uh, I have a pond, I could push it up right to the edge of my pond and uh, knock down some of the tall weeds and uh, that worked fine. But uh, one of the things that it came with uh, was a, uh, an edger attachment. Um, and uh, it was this, uh, this device which was driven from the engine here. Um, I don't know just exactly how, I've never tried to hook it up. I uh, live out in the sticks so uh, edging is not a big deal for me, not something I worry about a lot. but. Anyway, this uh, thing had some other attachments with our fixtures, which are off of there now, but uh, the function was to drive uh, this scary thing uh, to edge along your uh, driveway and uh, sidewalks and so on. And it, it sat in my uh, basement for years because I haven't done anything with it. And uh, so, but I did kind of like the uh, idea of the drive. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a worm drive arrangement. Uh, it uh, power comes in here from the engine, and it has a 30 to 1 reduction ratio. So this shaft turns really slow compared to the uh, input shaft, and it struck me that uh, I might be able to make some kind of a. Uh, if I came up with a tooth wheel or something for here, I might be able to uh, to drive that from the uh, uh, from an electric motor or some other power source, and. Uh, because of the tremendous uh, ratio, I'd be able to, to, to chip uh, not only uh, thin stuff like uh, uh, bleach bottles and so on, but also uh, uh, thicker stuff. I have uh, some uh, surplus uh, scraps of uh, ABS plastic that I wanted to try it on too. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's where uh, I got the idea and that's where I got started. Um, so the first thing I thought of is, is it how, uh, uh, I guess I was, I intended to mount this like this somehow, and how would I uh, make a chipper or a wheel to uh, cut things up with that. Uh, the original um, design had uh, quarter inch diameter pins that went through these two sides. It could, you could switch the wheel from one side to the other and they drove the wheel and I figured uh, if it could drive that wheel through rocks and stones and uh, hitting concrete and so on, it would probably be strong enough to, to chip plastic. Um, uh, one of the things uh, about it, however, is that this is apparently was a sellout when I got it. It was just included with the, uh, the string trimmers and, uh, and uh, it's not available anymore. And uh, so uh, you say, well, gee, that doesn't help you. Uh, uh, that's true. Uh, but uh, uh, I've been, I took a look in the, uh, uh, on, on, uh, on the web and uh, for uh, uh, 
edger attachments or better yet tiller attachments and there's all kinds of them uh, available for uh, uh, for these uh, well the more conventional spring trimmers that have uh, uh, they come now with uh, replaceable heads you know you can get one head for uh, string trimming and other heads for other things and one of them is a tiller and my guess is it would have uh, uh, some kind of a worm drive like this on it too because you certainly don't want a tiller turning around as fast as you would have a string trimmer turning so uh, I, I would uh, they're available uh, new uh, from uh, all kinds of vendors including Walmart and Home Depot and others uh, and uh, the prices uh, some of them are I don't know, between $50 and $100, uh, and uh, I would tend to think you could find something like that. Or the other alternative is to uh, visit a boneyard and see if you can find a uh, broken down garden tiller. Uh, those uh, are a little heavier than the ones that uh, it looks like I see uh, advertised now, but uh, uh, they had uh, a drive like this on the bottom to turn the, the tiller heads, and they were all different sizes and so on. And uh, I don't know, uh, uh, there's a uh, a garden uh, tool surplus place not too far from where I live and uh, I'm sure they would have one. I haven't been there but uh, I'm sure you could find one something like that there. They've got all kinds of broken down uh, garden and uh, uh, equipment. Today uh, I'm testing this camera with an external mic. Uh, I noticed that the uh, internal mic uh, was quite noisy and uh, hopefully this will be better. Okay, so the next thing I needed to do uh, was come up with a cutter wheel and uh, I had a scrap of uh, quarter inch thick uh, hot rolled steel in my scrap pile and uh, I decided to give that a try. I know that uh, this is uh, not a hard material and so it probably isn't going to last uh, uh, all that long, but uh, or we'll see, I guess. Uh, uh, I've used it for a while and it's still pretty sharp, but um, uh, at any rate, the, uh, eventually I would make a, something out of a, a hardened piece of steel, but this is what I had and I thought uh, I wanted to see if uh, the system worked at all. So I started with that. I wanted to fit that on this uh, uh, quarter or three quarter inch shaft that uh, uh, the, uh, it does fit on there, honest, it does. Um, Anyway, the, the shaft that this uh, comes out of the uh, uh, reducer, or worm drive. And uh, so I cut a circle, uh, cut a circular piece out for about four inches in diameter uh, with uh, a bandsaw. And then I, uh, I made a mandrel for it while I, I drilled the, uh, or bored the three quarter inch hole in the center, drilled it and reamed it actually. And uh, I made a mandrel for it. Uh, this was just a, again a, a scrap of 7 8 aluminum uh, rod stock that I had and uh, so I uh, made a mandrel. Uh, I put a shoulder on the, the rod that just uh, it's three quarters of an inch and fits in the uh, in the bore and uh, then I made the shoulder a little bit shorter a little bit less than a quarter of an inch so that uh, I could grip it this way. Boy easy for you to say. So uh, this is held on with a 3 8 bolt tapped in the end and held on with a 3 8 bolt. <clears throat> uh, so that uh, then I uh, that went in the lathe and I turned it in the lathe and got it uh, uh, uniform and uh, now I needed to make these teeth and uh, uh, well uh, to start with I had I used a collet in the lathe to uh, to hold it and um, it's not a you know it's it's not a, a super good uh, grip on there but uh, good enough if you use light cuts and uh, I had no trouble rounding the part off. Um, so now uh, I needed to make the, the teeth, and the way I did that, I put this uh, collet in a collet block and took it over to the mill. And now by uh, 
setting it in the mill, I was able to index it six ways using the collet block, put it in the vise this way, and then uh, rotate it 60 degrees and put it in the vise this way, etc., and keep going around until I had uh, exposed all the uh, the facets, and uh, that way I was able to make all these, these there's, there's uh, six teeth on the thing, and uh, that worked that way. Now to cut the teeth, I use this thing. This is a, a dovetail cutter, and uh, I bought this from uh, one of the uh, YouTube uh, creators that I uh, mentioned in, uh, in my opening uh, video, part one, uh, Randy Richards. Uh, Randy is a, uh, he's got a great channel. Uh, RR in the Shop is the name of his channel, and he uh, uh, does all kinds of interesting projects, and one of the things he does to raise a little money to help keep the, the channel going is he makes these dovetail cutters and uh, it's a really nice piece of equipment. He, uh, he, uh, he has, well he's got videos on exactly how he makes it but it has a carbide uh, cutter on it and that did a super job cutting this out. Um, and uh, so I made the teeth using that and uh, that and the, uh, the other secret was the, uh, uh, the, the collet block. These things are available for any machine tool supplier and they're not very expensive so that was uh, that was a good combination now this is not the sturdiest setup uh, because there's so much material sticking out from the uh, the point where it's anchored uh, it uh, you have to use light cuts but again I was able to come in starting from the the front I was able to come in like two hundred thousandths on the first two or three cuts and then uh, and then finish up with smaller increments and uh, that worked uh, fine now uh, a lot of what I've done here is use machine tools and uh, because that's my hobby I like doing that uh, but you don't necessarily have to do that I mean if you cut this out with a bandsaw or a jigsaw and uh, you had a good set of files you could do the same thing it would you take a little patience you maybe come in here with the saw and then this way come in this way and then down with the saw and then use a triangular file to cut the tooth uh, you'd uh, you know you'd be able to do that if you had a, a pretty good dose of patience and uh, so you don't necessarily have to use uh, machine tools uh, to do all these things one more thing uh, to do with the cutter blade we had to drive it uh, and as I mentioned this uh, uh, worm drive mechanism had a quarter inch uh, hole through it for uh, for uh, uh, for driving the cutter, uh, the other cutter that I showed you. And so uh, what I did was I took a, a milling cutter, a quarter inch milling cutter, and I put these uh, two slots in the uh, in my improvised cutter here. And uh, if you drop this through the uh, the hole there, you can see it. Uh, the pin, I rounded the pin on the end, and it uh, fits in there just perfect, and uh, gives you the drive. So now the next thing is uh, uh, how to mount uh, the uh, how to mount this unit so that we two more uh, scraps uh, now come into play. Uh, I decided to use this. Uh, this is a piece of. 2 by 10 lumber again that was laying around and I decided to use this as a base uh, to mount the whole assembly and uh, this is a, another scrap this was uh, left over from a off-road project that I had uh, worked on it's a piece of diamond plate and um, uh, I, want, I decided to use that mount that back here uh, to uh, support the, uh, <clears throat> the worm drive mechanism which mounts on just like this. So those two fit together and the cutter wheel of course will be right here where I'm pointing with my my finger. Um, so I'll assemble these and then we'll get back. Next uh, I had to come up with some kind of a surface for the cutter to work against and uh, I, I again uh, looked through my 
scrap box and I came up with a couple of uh, pieces of uh, one inch uh, cold rolled steel, one inch flat cold rolled steel. These are actually cut out of a larger piece where it was cut in this direction on a bandsaw. So we already had three sides here that were uh, from the original stock so they were reasonably square and, uh, and parallel. And uh, so I needed to cut uh, uh, a hole in here to uh, to fit the, uh, the three-quarter inch shaft and uh, make effectively like a table for this to cut against. So um, I uh, made a couple other pieces that I could bolt to this. <coughs> Uh, and uh, here's a second one for the other side and I did the same thing here oh, that's not right that's better <clears throat> So these would go on like this and so to make these uh, holes in here I uh, cinch these all down put them in the mill uh, in the vise in the mill and came down and bored uh, these holes through all four pieces at the same time and then uh, I actually used a drill slightly smaller than three quarters of an inch and then came in with a three quarter inch uh, reamer uh, to get a nice straight square hole. So these then fasten together <coughs> with a couple of bolts like this. I uh, put a couple holes in for uh, through the side for bolts. Those were all done at, also done at the same time. I did the other ones. And uh, <coughs> Now I had a table that I could, uh, this cutter could work against. So one more thing I needed uh, was a spacer to go in here so that um, <coughs> this cutter had room. And so another piece of quarter inch stock uh, I used to make a, a spacer. And then also I uh, made a shim. This is a piece of uh, flashing roof flashing material and it's cut uh, uh, it's about nine thousandths thick and it's cut to match the, the spacer and that way when this is all bolted together I got just enough room for the the cutter wheel to operate uh, between the two sides and uh, I'll assemble that a minute and then uh, we'll be back So now that we have a uh, surface to cut against, this uh, quarter inch shim provides the, a shearing action with these teeth and of course the sides uh, uh, just allow the, uh, the thing to turn in the space between them. Um, I did, what I did was I made some uh, holes in the bottom here that I could uh, turn some all thread into uh, to make a support for the base and I also made a, uh, a plate that I could mount on here. This is uh, mounted on here with wood screws into the into the base and then the um, uh, the all thread, pieces of all thread and there's four of them for the four corners of the uh, support table go in here and turn in like this and then there's a lock nut here and then there's a nut here for to to support it and this is this is held down with uh, into here with five wood screws and there's there's uh, four legs um, 
to hold it together. And uh, this works good because as this wheel turns, when it bites into a piece of plastic, there's a significant force down on here. And at the same time, the opposite force is up on the, uh, on the shaft here. So uh, with this bolted into the, the four legs on the back, prevent this from rising and the two on the front prevent that from falling and uh, the whole thing works pretty good. Um, so we're gonna uh, we're not gonna finish putting this together right now because uh, uh, we still have to work out the uh, the drive assembly on the back and I'll have to take this apart to do that so rather than put everything together and take it apart again we'll show you uh, how we uh, uh, do the drive assembly next. We're testing uh, yet another microphone arrangement, so we'll see if this uh, sounds any better. Uh, the next uh, problem is how to power this thing, and uh, uh, the uh, I wanted to I make an arrangement where I could have a pulley out here and uh, drive it with a small uh, fractional horsepower motor. And uh, the problem is uh, this. Um, has a kind of a unique um, uh, shaft coupling system. Uh, you can see it better in this photo. Um, it, it's an oval shaped uh, uh, shaft, uh, end of the shaft, and so I had to come up with something to, uh, to match that. Also, the uh, the bottom surface of this was uh, was uh, not even. The two halves of the casting, one extended higher than the other. So, I first uh, put this uh, on the vertical mill and cleaned that up and made it nice and flat. And then uh, I made a part uh, to. Fit that. This is. Uh, uh, started out as a piece of 7 8 uh, uh, round stock and 12L14 uh, and I turned it down to um, a half inch diameter here and uh, uh, yeah, I bored this, uh, this uh, slot in there with, using the mill. I went in first with a drill and then went back and forth with the mill to uh, uh, give it that shape. Uh, again, you can see better in the photographs. And uh, the only other thing I did was I turned a flat spot on it uh, for the set screw, uh, the pulley set screw. Now I had to come up with a way uh, to uh, mount this. Well, this would be mount. This is going to be mounted to the diamond plate, and this will fit on here. Boy, nothing. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that fits in there and serves as a shaft coupling. But I needed something to allow this uh, to be supported and uh, not uh, put a torque on this device. So I uh, made up another part. Uh, this is a, this started life as a, uh, a piece of uh, uh, aluminum uh, round bar, uh, this part here. And uh, I had some pieces of uh, uh, bearing bronze that were given to me by a machinist friend of mine. So I uh, drilled out the center of the round bar uh, to the right diameter so that I could and then turn these uh, pieces of uh, bearing bronze uh, to make bearings for the ends. They're about uh, three quarters of an inch long and uh, have a lip on them uh, on the top. And I pressed, made, a, made this a press fit so they pressed into the aluminum round stock one on each end and that formed uh, a pair of bearings that would uh, allow this to uh, have a would have a pulley on this side and uh, allow that to turn smoothly and then engage this uh, part here and uh, be able to turn the whole works. You can see the the shaft coming around there as I as I turn this. Um, so now. Uh, the final step was to make this square piece, which is just a piece of aluminum uh, flat stock, and I bored a hole in there, 
Again, I put a shoulder on this uh, uh, aluminum bar stock and uh, I originally intended this to be a press fit into here, but I uh, ended up uh, shaving just a little too much off and it was a nice tight fit, but not a press fit. So I used uh, Loctite, uh, red Loctite to uh, seal that in there and that's held up really well. So that's the assembly, that's the bearing assembly and uh, I'll uh, assemble this to the, to the diamond plate here and uh, we'll come back. The only reason I used uh, diamond plate here is that's what I had. Um, and so uh, in order to get this to fit uh, snugly against there, I had to go in with the mill and mill the diamonds off of this area and a couple other areas here for, uh, for screws to, to hold the, uh, the other part on uh, the worm drive on. So the bearing block is uh, held on by uh, four flathead screws. Whoops. That go in here. They pass through the bearing block and uh, tie everything together. like this and uh, uh, once that is mounted then <coughs> the shaft coupler goes in like this The coupler gets uh, held in place by the uh, by the worm drive unit. It's captured between the worm drive unit and the bearing block, and the whole thing goes together like this. So well, that's the uh, complete assembly of the the uh, worm drive unit and the uh, and the bearing block. I don't have any of the screws tightened up yet, but uh, that's the idea anyway. <clears throat> We're getting close here. Um, <clears throat> to power this guy. Uh, I have a <clears throat> one sixth horsepower motor that was also something that was laying around. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> it mounts like that. <clears throat> Put 
pulley for the uh, gotta hit the flat spot here <coughs> pulley for that that end and uh, uh, oh, I put that's backwards but that's right uh, and then a <coughs> cord with an on off switch to mount here and uh, uh, then we uh, we will uh, then we got it um, the We'll put the whole thing back together with the table and everything, and uh, in the next video uh, we'll be doing some, uh, some tests on it to see how, uh, how it works on different kinds of plastic. Uh, till then, thanks for watching, and we'll uh, uh, be back to you soon.